Hello everybody, this is Tim once again. I recently got done watching Halloween 2. Uh, figured I'd go ahead and show my DVD copy of it. Uh, Halloween 2 is directed by Rick Rosenthal and written by John Carpenter. Um, and Deborah Hill, who I believe both, well I know John Carpenter wrote the first one, but I think Deborah Hill helped, helped him write the first one as well. Uh, we'll start right off the bat, the film isn't as good as the first one. It's not a bad movie by any means, and it is a it is a good sequel. It's not the uh, way I would have liked to have seen this series continue. I didn't really want a sequel, but since we got one anyway, I would have preferred something more along the lines of the first one, suspense wise. But uh, in this one, you they try to imitate that same suspense for a while, but then after a while, they're like fuck it and just go for more of like a straight up slasher vibe with the kills and stuff. They're much more graphic in this one and more over the top, like for a later slasher movies of the 80s uh, but uh I'll jump right into the film here it takes place on the same exact night as the original picks up right after the end of the first movie which I love how that as I love that it's like right after Michael Myers gets shot BAM second movie I thought that was pretty cool I enjoyed that uh, Michael Myers has disappeared uh, they're looking for him Laura Strode just took to the hospital you can actually get a little uh, uh, this is Dana Carvey makes an appearance in this movie it's his first role in like in his entire filmography, I believe. He makes like a five second appearance as like one of the guys who's working with these reporters. You don't even see his face, he's just like shot from the side, but I just thought that was interesting. Uh, but um, she gets took to the hospital. Uh, Dr. Loomis is uh, still looking for Michael Myers and <laughs> trying to take him out. Uh, Dr. Loomis is a little more, uh, a little more crazy acting in this movie. Like he sees a guy who uh, he thinks is Michael Myers and just gets ready to shoot him automatically just because he thinks it's Michael Myers. And the dude just bam gets fucking wiped out completely by uh, a police car and uh, he he blow, he blow the, the vehicle blows up and he fucking burns to death. And you're like shit. There's more action in that one scene right there and that one scene is uh, <laughs> slightly more graphic than anything in the first movie. So you know you're in for more of a a fun ride in this one and less of a sus well crafted suspenseful movie as the first one. But there's no way they would have been able to duplicate the suspense of the first movie. They tried, and they come off all right with it. You get more of Michael Myers like appearing in the background and stuff like that, but not as much as you uh, as you did in the first movie. I'll go ahead and say this is a three-and-a-half star film out of a possible four. Um, I do like this movie a lot. Uh, I say it's probably going to be the best sequel. I haven't seen four in a long time, but this is probably going to be the best sequel. But, um... Uh, yeah, this is a good film, but it goes for more of a slasher vibe and loses the well-crafted suspense and the uh, and it loses like the urban legend feel to the, of the first movie with Michael Myers stalking a babysitter or whatever for no reason, just the fact that he's insane. Because uh, in this one they give motivation that she's Michael Myers' sister, Laura Strode is played once again by Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, and I really don't like that. You don't need that at all. There's no reason for that to be there. That just feels like it's there because people are just just can't be satisfied with someone just being insane in a movie. They gotta have some type of fucking motivation. But, whatever. Uh, there's no reason for it to be there. But, jump right into the film. Uh, Michael Myers makes his way. Uh, he's avoiding the police. He steals a butcher knife from this uh, old couple's place. Doesn't kill him, just takes the knife and leaves. Um, and then he, but he kills this girl across the street. Now, this kill feels like he's just thrown in there just for the sole purpose of they wanted to just they wanted to kill immediately in this movie because this film feels like they're trying to amp it up amp the character of Michael Myers up to get more deaths in this one because this film has a higher body count than the first one so it can compete more with the slasher films that ran at that time uh, so you this kill Michael Myers has no reason to kill somebody at this point I don't think I mean I know he's a killer and he likes to kill but there's really no reason for this scene to be in the film honestly uh, there's like a girl next door of the old, uh, to the old people who we just stole a knife from, put your knife, and he goes over there and just kills her just to kill her. There's no reason or purpose for it. And I don't think it's ever referenced again in the movie. And she's dead. And then he decides to head for the hospital. You get the, some of the good suspense scenes like the first movie here, like um, like uh, people walking and just all make bumping into Michael Myers for a brief second. You get some of that repeat stuff. Um. So Michael Myers heads to the hospital. Is still after Jamie Lee Curtis. Doctor Loomis is just well wandering around. Trying to, after they figure out that that wasn't Michael Myers that died in the fire, um, 
It actually turns out it's, a, it's Ben Tramer, the character that was briefly mentioned in the first movie that they were trying to hook up uh, Laurie Strode with, which I thought was a neat little callback. I like that. That was cool. But, um, yeah, um, so he finds out it wasn't Michael Myers that died, so he's still looking for Michael Myers. Um, uh, Michael Myers, for some reason, is broken to a school in the movie and stabbed a, a fucking color drawing uh, of a family, stabbed a little sister in the picture. Why Michael Myers broke into the school, I, there's really no reason given for it, I don't think, and it seems just like a, a scene there for padding, or just to offer some, um, I don't know, it doesn't really offer any more information on uh, Michael Myers, besides the fact that he doesn't like sisters, and we kind of already knew that from the first movie, so really don't see any reason for this scene to be here, but whatever. The woman from the first movie, the nurse, I believe, who uh, was with my, was with uh, Dr. Loomis, Don Pleasant's character, uh, when he was going to pick up Michael Myers so they could put him in front of a judge. She shows back up. She uh, gets with uh, Donald Pleasance, and then uh, this is when Donald Pleasance finds out that uh, my, uh, she was, she's actually Michael Myers' other sister, Jamie Lee Curtis' character is. You get a scene in the movie where she's having a dream about uh, something. I guess that she's a memory she repressed where she found out she was adopted, and she actually went to the asylum to see Michael Myers, which demystifies the character even more a little bit. Or we see him as a little kid in the asylum. And it kind of shows how he knew uh, who she was. And kind of like, well, I mean, I got the idea that it's kind of a, um, that he's kept tabs on her somehow or something. That That's how he found her. He wasn't just like random chance of him finding her, him actually hunting after her in some kind of supernatural way or anything. It's just kind of like he kept tabs on her or something. I don't know. I just felt the scene kind of demystified the character. Well, I guess he really wouldn't be able to keep tabs on her from inside an asylum. But I just felt the scene kind of just demystified the character even more because we didn't really need to see more of him. I mean, without his mask and him younger and as a kid and stuff, it's interesting. But unless you're doing a prequel or something like that, there's really no purpose of this. I really, but there's no purpose of the sister storyline. I mean, well, there's, it's, there's a purpose for it, but it doesn't need to be there at all. It demystifies the character. And this is a character that is better off non being non demystified, but um. Anyway, jump right back into the film here. Um, so Laura Strode's at the hospital. Most of the characters in this one are kind of interchangeable. There's not really, I mean, they don't really serve a purpose other than just to die. A lot of them don't. Um, you get this guy named Jimmy who's at the hospital. He's okay, but he amounts to nothing. He's got like a crush on Laura Strode. And, Keeps hitting on her, and there's really seems to be no reason for him to be there other than that. They kind of build his character up, like he's gonna do something or be some some way useful in this movie, but he doesn't do shit at all. He's fucking useless. <laughs> but um, so uh, yeah, you got and there's a he's a there's another guy who works there who's uh, friends with Jimmy. His name's Bud or something like that, and he cusses a lot. And he's kind of funny, <laughs> but um, ultimately he's just. Well, an asshole, so you don't really give a shit what happens to him. The rest of the characters are just interchangeable. They're just hospital workers. There's no reason for them to be there. Uh, Lori gets uh, drugged up in this movie, and so she's much more of a damsel in distress in this one, unless of a fighter like she was in the first one. She kind of just crawls away from Michael Myers for the whole end of the movie and just tries to get away. I, I know it's supposed to make her, like, you mean, it's supposed to make it more interesting because it's going to be harder for her to get away, but at the same time, I preferred it when she was able to fight back or when she did fight back. Instead of just running away and crying and, or crawling away and crying and just trying to get out of there. Donald Pleasant's character is much more the straight up hero in this one. Um, even though he pretty much saved her in the first movie, she still fought back a lot. Uh, Laura Strode's character never really gets a chance to handle things completely on her own to a Halloween H2O. Which is worse than this movie. <laughs> I still don't hate that one, but it's nowhere near as good as these first two. But, um. Uh, you jump back into the movie here. Um, so, Lori can't, she can't run or walk or whatever. She basically crawls through most of it. She's had like an allergic reaction to the drug or something like that for some reason. I'm like, okay. But, um, to the drugs they've been giving her. Um, the rest of the characters, like I said, they're interchangeable. Michael Myers kills one of the doctors there, or the only doctor there off screen. Um, he kills one nurse by. Stabbing her in like the right here on the side of her face with a needle kills her with an air bubble pretty de decent scene kills bud by strangling him like off well you can see him like uh, well he strangles him um, 
back through. Uh, you can see like, him strangling him through a window. See Michael Myers strangling Bud. Uh, it's an okay scene. It's entertaining. So one of the only death scenes in the film. It's more reminiscent of the ones from the first movie. Uh, and then he kills Bud's girlfriend, the nurse he was fucking, by putting her into this like a some kind of uh, it's like a bath they got at the hospital, and it's like the heat on it is cranked up to dangerous levels. And he just puts her, grabs her by the neck, puts her head down in. Oh, before that, he puts her hand on her shoulder. She thinks it's her boyfriend, and she or thinks it's Bud. So it's like kissing his hand. So I'm like Michael Myers, are you just like really fucking horny? Is that what the deal is? Because you <laughs> fucked with that woman in the first movie, or are you just like fucking with chicks pretending to be their boyfriends or something? Are you, he might just have a lot of repressed sexual rage. <laughs> I don't know, but so he he's fucking with her, which I liked again. I thought was funny. Um, um, so he starts putting her face into the hot water, drowning her and burning her alive. And they overdo the scene; and it lasts too long. It seems like they're trying to be more graphic here, just to be more graphic. There's really no reason to go too long with the scene. But uh, the kill is okay. It's just too overdone, too long. Um, so she's dead decent scene her skin's like melting around her face um so she's dead michael myers just kind of roams around the hospital uh i'm not really sure why he's killing the other hospital workers instead of just killing laura strode and then just leaving to be honest but uh i guess in the first movie he killed her friends as well instead of just killing her like he just could have but I, in the first movie it made more sense because they're her friends and i guess he wanted to kill them uh, just to fuck with her more or something like that. I know he just likes to kill. I can understand him killing maybe one or two of the people here, but killing everybody in the whole hospital, I don't really see much of a reason for that. Uh, or at least, it seems like he kills most of them just to kill them, but the other ones, it kind of seems like he kills them just because they happen to, he just happened to run into them at the wrong time. But uh, he kills a, a police officer there, the fat cop, <laughs> who walks outside. And you get a stupid scene here where a cat jumps out. It's a jump scare cat, cliche in horror movies. I hate that shit. <laughs> but he kills the cop by hitting him in the head with a hammer. Uh, decent scene. Uh, well done. Suspense. Other than jump scare cat. <laughs> so he's dead. Uh, well, he killed him first before he started killing the nurses, I believe. Um, he kills another nurse towards the end of the movie. Where uh, Laura Strode's trying to crawl away. Where Michael Myers, she knows. Well, Laura Strode basically knows because the power's out and everything there that Michael Myers is coming for her. And, uh, so she prepares, and she gets away and starts crawling, and he's coming after her, and she she runs into the nurse, and Michael Myers comes up behind her and fucking stabs her in the back of the spinal cord, I believe, and lifts her all the way up, which is a pretty cool scene. Uh, they do it again in Halloween H2O. It's a decent kill, but once again, it's more over-the-top, more horror, well, slasher movie-ish than the first movie, but, uh, which is a vibe I don't really think this character needed, but, um, uh, it's good. I mean, it's not a bad kill or anything. It's fun. I, I enjoy it. I'm just saying it doesn't really fit with this character that much. But it's still cool. Seems more like something Jason would do, really. But uh, it's still cool. So, she's dead. And Jimmy, uh, his character, they just waste him. He doesn't do shit. Uh, they play him up like he's going to be interesting or help Lori in some way. And he just walks into this room as other nurses. I mean, this other hospital worker is dead. And, She's been, like, drained of her blood, and there's, like, a whole gallon of blood on the floor. There's more blood right here on this floor than it was in the entire first movie. But, uh, she's dead, and Jimmy just walks over and just turns around and slips, falls down. I'm like, what the fuck ever? He just falls down and just gets knocked out. I'm like, okay, this motherfucker's useless. If you're not going to do anything with him, just kill him. What the fuck's the point? Keeping him alive. But, anyway, so he just gets knocked out. <laughs> and Lori's just, like, crawling away and shit. Michael's, uh, going after her. But uh, he moves way slower in this movie than he did in the first one. I mean, slow to the point of where it's almost a little laughable. He moves, like, way too slow. Where he's coming after her, and um, he fucking, like, she gets in the elevator, and all he's got to do is move, like, one extra inch, just, like, barely, and he can get her and just kill her and be done with it. But he still, he walks like, he walks like a fucking snail. I know it's a thing in the horror films where the killer always walks slow, but, uh, Michael Myers walked slow in the first one, but he still, well, he kind of like power walked. He didn't move like super slow like he does here. I mean, he walks so slow in that scene where she's getting in the elevator that it's, it's almost ridiculous. But, uh, it's, the ending final chase is, is still cool. Um, he's trying to slash at her legs and stuff when she crawls the window and he comes after her. But, um, so Dr. Loomis discovers that she's Michael Myers' sister. Yeah, he goes to the hospital to try to save her. Uh, he gets there, um, 
But uh, Laura Strode's that manages to make it outside. She's outside. She gets in the car. Jimmy comes out there, surprised. He's still alive. He gets in the vehicle, and he's like, talking about he, he's going to do something. He just passes out, falls on the horn. I'm like, again, what the fuck is this guy still alive for? What is he doing? He serves no purpose. But anyway, he just falls out on the horn. Um, and then she lifts him off of it, and I don't even know if he's alive or dead. It never explains it, so I'm just like, he's even more useless. <laughs> I guess they just wanted to give her a love interest just because she's a woman. I, there's no reason for it other than that, I guess. <laughs> but uh, she gets out of the vehicle. Uh, she sees Dr. Loomis and the cop that he's with and the, the nurse are in the... They go inside the hospital. She heads in. She tries to get over to him. Michael Myers pops back up. He's coming after her. She makes it in. Michael Myers busts through the glass. Uh, Dr. Loomis uh, uh, fucking... Guns him down like a badass and shoots him and he takes him down. Uh, the cop heads over there like a dumbass and gets right near him. Dr. Loomis tells him not to get near him. The nurse goes outside to call the police and get him there. Uh, but the cop goes over there and he's, he's like, he's not breathing. Dr. Loomis is like, get away from him. And I'm like, you dumb bastard. <laughs> Why are you getting that close to him? <laughs> Michael Myers has got a scalpel. He raises up and fucking slits the dude's throat. Obviously, like when it was going to happen, entertaining scene, but it was predictable. Um, oh, in this movie, you get a scene where a little kid goes to the hospital and he's got a fucking razor blade in his mouth, which I thought was cool. And that is one of the only scenes that is, uh, has the vibe of like the uh, Halloween urban legend feel the first movie, like the razor blades and candy and shit. And I, I like that. Um, but anyway, uh, back to the end of the movie here. Um, so they're in there, they're in the hospital again. The cop is dead, his throat's been slit, and you get a decent little amount of blood across his neck. It's alright. Um, Michael Myers gets back up, starts coming after him. Laurie Strode and, um, sorry, um, Donald Pleasance. Uh, well, I shouldn't call one by their character name and the other one not by her character name. Uh, Laurie Strode and fucking uh, Dr. Loomis, they make it into this room where it's got like a bunch of oxygen uh, containers, I think it is. And, uh, they're in there. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, they're in there. Michael Myers comes in there. He busts through the door. Typical Michael Myers shit. Uh, Laura Strode's got the gun, and she says, Michael, stop. And he kind of, like, hesitates for a minute, and I'm like, okay. It's a neat little character trait, actually. I mean, it's pretty neat that he stops and hesitates. It makes you think that maybe he doesn't even know what he's doing, or he's just so fucked up in the head that he just can't control what he's doing. But it adds actually, actually adds an extra element to the character that I like. doesn't demystify him, and adds an interesting element that you can think about so just out so just out front with it this character is uh, adding stuff to him is better where it's open for interpretation instead of just explaining it like the whole sister thing which you don't need but uh, he starts coming towards her anyway she jerks out a gun that she's got and she, uh, that she got from the cop I believe uh, or uh, Dr. Loomis gave it to her I think I be uh, yeah I believe Dr. Loomis gave it to her uh, she jerks out a gun, fucking shoots him directly in both of his eyes, and she's a crack shot, and I don't think she's ever shot, her character's ever shot a gun before, so that's a little ridiculous, but it's a movie, so I'm willing to give it that, I'm okay with that, plus, it's cool having Michael Myers blinded, and he's just swinging, he, he uses a scalpel for almost the entire movie, uh, just swinging his scalpel, trying to hit whoever he can hit, and, um, Dr. Loomis be making noises over in one end of the room, and she'll make noises over in the other end, and he'll just keep going from one side to the other, just swinging randomly open to hit somebody. I thought that was pretty cool. That's a pretty cool idea for a final. That's pretty neat. Um, Dr. Loomis tells Laura Strode to get the fuck out of there. She makes it out of there. Uh, he starts coming back towards uh, Dr. Loomis. Uh, Dr. Loomis lets gas out in the room. Uh, yeah, I believe there are uh, containers of gas. Uh, Dr. Loomis lets gas out in the room, fucking lights a lighter, and he's like, it's time, Michael. And the fucking, the whole place explodes, the whole room just fucking obliterates. And it's pretty cool. It's epic ending for these two characters, and the right ending. Uh, if the films, this series didn't end with the first one, it should end here. There's no reason whatsoever to continue on. There's no way these characters would have survived this. Dr. Loomis especially, even though I, I know he comes back in the later films. There's no way in hell that he would have fucking lived through this. Michael Myers, you see him coming out of the out of the fire, still walking while he's on fire. He fought, it's kind of like a Terminator thing. You're like, oh shit, he's still coming, which I liked. And then he just falls over, which I thought was cool. So he falls over and he just falls down on the ground. He like burns away, and you can see him burning like the fucking fire has consumed him. And he would be like almost a skeleton by the time they got there. There's no way in hell that he would have had a barely. He would have 
<laughs> wouldn't even had a movable body. I mean, he would have been like half bones by the time the the power, uh, by the time the fucking <laughs> police and everybody got there. I mean, there. This is part four. I know is the one where he comes back. And that feels really forced. There's no way in hell that he would have had a. <laughs> there's no way in hell that he would survive this. Even if he was superhuman, there wouldn't have been anything to survive. He would have been burnt almost to nothingness. But um, anyway, just for this movie, uh, that's a great end for the character of Michael Myers and Doctor Loomis. It's like they almost both started it together. And it's pretty much the story of Dr. Loomis, Michael Myers, and Laura Strode. These two films are. Um, and it's just great that it ends with those three. That's the way it should end. And, and there's no reason for any more sequels after these two. There wasn't no reason for the second one, but if we have to have one, this is probably almost the best they could do at the time. And uh, it's got a perfect ending for the characters. Dr. Loomis and uh, Michael Myers are both dead. It makes perfect sense that they would end like that tragically. Uh, well, tragic for Dr. Loomis, anyway. Michael Myers, I don't really think anyone gives a fuck if he's dead. But, uh, so the police come there, the paramedics got their lawyer's codes in the ambulance, and then Mr. Sandman plays, and we get to see Michael Myers burning away, and I'm like, it's a cool, sweet ending. Uh, and the songs, uh, <laughs> I like hearing Mr. Sandman, so it's a cool ending. Not as good as the first ending, which, uh, pretty much ended the story on the right way, but this one ends the characters, so there wouldn't be sequels, even though they forced them anyway. But uh, it's still a great ending and uh, a lot of fun. Very action-y, more than the first movie. Uh, the final is this one anyway. But yeah, and you never find out what the fuck happened to Jimmy. They don't even mention it. I know in the TV version they got an extended ending where Jimmy's still alive and he's in the back of the ambulance. I would have preferred that. Them still alive, but him just disappearing. You're just like, what the fuck happened? How did he, did he die just from falling? Because it didn't seem like he hit his head that hard. So I'm like, I mean, it didn't seem like his, he hit his head that hard on the floor, so I'm like, what the fuck happened to him? Where did he go? It's like he just in the movie, and he just disappears. So, <laughs> he's a useless character. There's no reason for him to be here whatsoever in this fucking movie. But, um, she's in the back of the amulets, and then the, you get the song, and you get to see Michael Myers burning, and that's in the movie. And so, this is a good sequel. I'd give it uh, three and a half stars out of possible four. Not as good as the first movie, but still pretty fucking good, and I really enjoyed it. I remember liking this film and part four uh, out of the sequels and pretty much not giving a shit about the rest of them except for the producer's cut of Halloween 6, which I'll probably review after I review all the films. Um, but, um, yeah, the story should just end here. There's no reason for any more sequels, at least not with Michael Myers. I don't really care too much for Halloween 3, but you had the right idea by doing a different story. But, uh, I guess people wanted Michael Myers back, uh, because they expected it because he was in one and two. The right thing to do, to be honest, would have been to make this one a non-Michael Myers movie and give it like a, a different name. But have like a, just put Halloween uh, or a Season of the Witch, uh, Halloween or something like that. Or Halloween Presents Season of the Witch or something like that. Um, for this movie instead of the third one. That way people wouldn't expect Michael Myers back for the third one and feel like they got fucking gypped, <laughs> basically. But um, this is where the franchise should have ended. And in my opinion, if you want to watch any of these movies, just watch the first two and stop there and just cut off and be done with it. Uh, watch H2O, maybe if you want to, but this is really a three-character story of Dr. Loomis, uh, Laurie Strode, and uh, Michael Myers. And this is pretty much the end for those three characters. I mean, the real end. There's no reason for any more films. But, um, yeah, this is a really good movie. I definitely recommend watching this sequel if you enjoyed the first one. I really like this one, even though it has a different vibe and more of a slasher vibe. But uh, it's still enjoyable, and it's understandable that they would do more of a slasher feel since the this was around the I believe the mid '80s or maybe the, even the later '80s. I don't know. It's more of the mid mid '80s, I'd say. Um, but um, no, I actually think it might have been closer to the earlier '80s, maybe even because the original Halloween was 1979, wasn't it? I believe, and then this film was what like 1983, maybe or '82. Whatever the fuck, <laughs> it's still, uh, I can still understand I'm amping up the violence because of the other, other, all the other slasher films that were out at the time. And the kills aren't that over the top, except for the one where he's drowning the woman in the hot water. But uh, this is still a really good movie, and I definitely recommend you check it out if you like the first film. But it's not as good as the first film, obviously, but I never expected it to be. So I'll see you guys again with a review for Halloween 3, and uh, 
if you ain't got to watch any Halloween films, just watch the first and the second one. I'll see you guys again with the review for Halloween 3.